I'm really glad you could go. So the other day we talked about some of the uh, uh, people you work with, homeowners. Could you just say like the houses you worked on specifically? Yeah, I first, uh, well I actually cooked for the first week. I was an assistant cook to Evelyn Turner. Baked some amazing meals, cookies. Uh, thank you for all the cookie recipes. They enjoyed, they enjoyed them greatly, they really did. Um, then I went out on the project to work the remaining three weeks and one of the first homes I went to was down in Boulder. Uh, a guy named Mike and his family, he lived right in the town of Boulder. He had three feet of water in his basement for a month. He had three pumps working continuously to get the water out, but it destroyed his whole basement, drywall, insulation, his daughter's bedroom. And so I first learned uh, how to install insulation and drywall in that home. And then we went up into Jamestown to work on Mr. Rick's home. Uh, this gentleman was about ready to retire. He had almost had his house all paid off when the flood took his home out completely, washed his dog down the creek. He had to watch his dog get washed. Um, then after all that, his son died of cancer a few months after the flood. Um, Habitat for Humanity is doing most of the work on his home and he's hopefully gonna be able to move into that home around May 15th and get his life going again. Um, he's really devastated by it. I talked to him, a lot of people heard his story and he's still emotional about it. Can't even get through the story without breaking down. And uh, he really needs to get back into his home. So. What, uh, what was the hardest task you had while you were there? Digging ditches. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, no hesitation. If anybody knows Colorado's ground, it's rocky and dry. A lot of rocks in that ground. It's not like Oregon soil. I don't know how they grow anything in that, that parched environment. But so th th yeah. uh, this is the only Mennonite church you've been to. And then Never. you go there, yeah. and you're with Mennonite disasters, and you have Mennonites from everywhere. <laughs> what, what did you learn about Mennonites that's maybe different or broader than your experience here? The Mennonites just have a lot of giving in their heart, and they want to help folks. You know, um, Too many times we focus on our own difficulties and trials in life and don't think about other people. And it just uh, puts everything into perspective when you meet people and hear their stories of people who lost their homes, some of their family members through this happening. Um, the town of Jamestown is a really small, tight-knit community of artists and musicians. And for an unchurched community, these people show more love and care about their neighbor than a lot of churches in Portland do. You know, and I think a lot of people in a lot of churches could learn a lot if they went up to Jamestown and see the strength of this community. They put together some items that they sell called Mountain Strong, that we're strong, we're survivors, and it's Jamestown, California. Or, or Colorado, and I actually bought a hat you know, to bring it back. So, yeah, they're uh, good people up there. In yeah, just seeing the giving spirit of people and reading a couple of books about how MDS started long before we were around, you know, how um, MDS is just always the first to show up after a disaster and not ask anything of the community other than we're here to help where a lot of other organizations will ask something from the community that either makes them feel uncomfortable or kind of just standoffish. Mike, would you like to go again? I plan on doing this as long as I can walk. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I have found a new direction and purpose in my life that I've never had before. Most times when I was homeless, I just focused on my own needs and self-interests and never thought that I would ever be called to 
do what Jesus asks all of us to do, what is to serve people, be God's hands and feet on earth. Because for me, it's the most rewarding and satisfying way I can please God and, and glorify God and make him proud of me instead of disappointed, which I'm sure he was most of my life. Because I was just basically self-centered, focused on my own situation and didn't think of the broader world or what I could do to participate or, or give back to society. So it's been great for me. Wow. Amen. Amen. Wow. I feel that you can go, Mike, and uh, thank you for living out your faith, and uh, thank, thank the rest of you. I'd just like to say one more thing. I would encourage anybody, young or old, married or single, skilled or unskilled, to, if you have a sense of service and adventure in your heart, go check it out, because anybody can do anything. All you have to do is plug in. I was kind of insecure when I went in, telling the guy I had no construction skills. I'm, you know, I can be a cook, but I don't know much about constructing or framing. He goes, just plug in wherever you're, you know, people are here to encourage you, to be patient with you, and you can just learn. And I learned how to put in insulation and drywall. And, you know, I mean, anybody can do anything. All volunteers, no matter your skill level, are much needed and appreciated by everyone involved. Thank you all.